Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered when, where, where does money come from? Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I've got to get more money? Or have you ever said, man, those people that are rich, they probably had to do things that weren't good in order to get rich. And so that's why I may not need to be rich because, because man, when you're rich, you do bad things. Like, does any of that resonate with you? You know, today I just want to talk briefly about my personal money mindset makeover. And maybe you can gather something that I've said today that can potentially help you. But this is all about what I'm personally doing to make over my mindset when it comes to money. Welcome back to another episode of the Account for Life podcast. I'm Jay Moore, a healthy accountant, helping you to account for your life. And so let's jump right into this. This will be, you know, I'm, I'm testing something new um, to actually get a little bit shorter on some of my podcasts. So let's jump right in. So I've been thinking about money lately, like I always do. And I've been thinking about, you know, where I'm going, what I'd like to do, my dreams, my hopes, my dream, like all the stuff, right? And, you know, it, it really boils down for me, it boils down to, to really just understanding what is money. Have you ever thought about that? What is money? You know, I was having a conversation with my wife yesterday and we were talking about money. I can't remember exactly the whole part of it, but I'm just going to mention a part that, that, that we briefly touched on. When you look at a dollar bill, when you look at a $20, $100, whatever it is, it says promissory note. This is a note. It's a note. It's not, it's not even real. It's just a piece of paper. So what is money? Money is a construct. It's, it's something that's just poof. You know, oh, money is an idea. Oh, but back in 1971, when we were having this conversation yesterday, 1971, the year I was born, something happened to money. Do you know what happened in that year? 1971. Well, was it Nixon who removed what money really is? What is money? I'm not talking about the ideas yet. Money is gold. Money is a resource. Money is something tangible. And in 1971, the United States removed gold as the standard, as what we use to back up our money. So think about it like this. If if gold is the symbol of money, and yet we don't really have any gold, then what is money? I'm not saying the United States doesn't have any gold. What I'm saying is that the actual construct of money is something that we, for me, I'm not, I'm not sure about you. For me, I have to start thinking and looking at it differently. Because, because one, if it's a construct, then that means that how it's been constructed, I have to have to understand that there may be some pitfalls. There may be some things that could potentially hurt me in the process of understanding what money really is. I think it was back in 2020, I did a challenge. It was to make money now challenge. And it was geared towards realtors. And I was kind of like, I was breaking down, you know, how to build a business, how to build a different type of business inside of a real estate opportunity. And it was, it, it was a construct. It, you know, was something I said, well, if we have an idea and we actually go in on the idea, make the idea exactly how I see the idea and not just how everybody else sees the idea, then I can actually make money now instead of waiting. Because in that business, you have to wait. You, I, I mean, you have to go out. Oh, the, the economy is bad. Oh, my goodness. People aren't selling the houses or the interest rates went up. So now something on the outside is affecting my business. It's affecting me whether or not I can make sales. Then I have to use a different construct to make money. So make money now concept was all about the idea. The idea that, man, I was just having a conversation with somebody. And in the conversation is, wow, you know, me, me and my partner, Shana, we started a brand new business last year. And it's been a year already. It, it was a construct. Every, like every month has been new. We've been creating new things every money to make more money because we had an idea. One idea. Let's use this one idea. Now, here's the thing. When you're talking about, when I'm talking about making my, turning my money mindset around, what am I really talking about here? Okay. Have you ever had a desire 
to give money away? Have you ever had a desire to help more people? Have you ever had a desire to take care of a family member, maybe your mom, your dad? You know, have you ever, you know, had a desire to, you know, to just you know what? I'd love to be able to donate to these causes or I would love to help friends. Have you ever had a desire to do that? Have you ever had a desire to, you know, to, you know, to help people go to school or have you ever had a desire to just, you know, man, if I could just if I could just give. Do you know, at least for me, I have to change my mindset. Because at the end of the day, most of us wake up in the morning and we go after our own personal money situation, which you have to. That's the first level of money. Go and put your own oxygen mask on. Put your own oxygen mask on. Put your mask on so you are solid. Take your, I got to take my eyes off all the other stuff I'd like to do because I've got to actually be able to do it first. See, a lot of times we get caught up. I've gotten caught up. I'm not sure about you. I've gotten caught up in, in what I would call a religious way of thinking. This, I'm, not, I'm not bashing. I'm just saying a religious way of thinking. And in a religious way of thinking, no one wants to be rich. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Most people don't want to get rich. Oh, you know, yeah, all of it's going to burn up anyway. I know. right? This is a contrary way of thinking, a religious way of thinking. Why, why, why wouldn't a religious person want to be rich? Why wouldn't you want to have more money? I, I see a lot of my friends, you know, they, you know, they may post and say, hey, can you donate to this cause? I'm like, well, why don't we just all decide to go get more, create ideas, create more value in the marketplace? Why wouldn't we do that? But I had this way of thinking. I had personally had that way of thinking. So if I have this way of thinking, then that potentially can hurt what I'd like to do, I'd like to give more. My wife knows. I give on a heartbeat. Somebody needs some money, I'll help. You know, like I give to strangers. People ask me for money, and I'll just give it to them. And and it's interesting because most people don't do that. You know, had something happen recently, and I gave some money, and you know, I was kind of checking around. Anybody help? Nobody else helped the person. I was like, wow, that's interesting. I just did it so freely. Now, I'm not I'm not telling myself what I'm just saying. A lot of times we want to do things, but because we want to do things, we got to do things. I, I think I heard Dr. Miles Monroe say it one time. He said this. He said that um, sometimes when you're down on your when, when you're down down to your last, he says, don't use your last for you. Go get go help somebody with your last. That doesn't make any sense. If I don't have enough money for me, why would I go and help? Why would I go and spend my money or go give to somebody else? Has anybody ever done that? Where literally you need you need food on your table, but you go put food on someone else's table. Dr. Miles like, yeah, that's when you, instead of eating your seed, you sow a seed. This is a contrary way of thinking. And as I've been making my mind over with money, just with with people like the great Dr. Miles Monroe has helped me to see different things like, wow, you know, I, if I don't have enough, then that just means I should help more people potentially with one dollar, two dollar, ten dollars. It doesn't really matter. So why am I talking about this money mindset makeover? Here's what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about it because because I know how important it is for me. Like, what about you? So, like, I, this isn't about, hey, you can go have a money mindset makeup. This is about me and my money mindset makeup. I'm just talking about it because at the end of it, you know, that's all I can do. I can talk about something that's happened in my own personal experience and getting better. And money is one of these things that when you have the money, you get to control your life. Back in my network marketing days. It was all about, man, can you control your life? Can you control your life? Can you can can you own your day? Sadly, many will never own their days. Many will never control their lives. And making over my money mindset would actually help little me. It'll help me to be able to help people. Hire people, give give to causes, you know, help family if needed, 
help friends if needed. Like, but but here's the thing. You got to have so much of it. But here's the thing. Here's my last point I'm going to make before I jump off. When you come from a lack mentality, when you come from a lack mentality, it's almost like it's just, it's really hard to go into the abundance mentality. Think of it like this. If someone came and put their hand on your throat and started to squeeze your throat, what would you want? You, you would want oxygen. Now, here's the thing about that is that if when someone's hand is not on your throat, you have plenty of oxygen. But it's not until someone's hand is on your throat that all of a sudden you you realize you don't have any oxygen. And that's what you need. See, with money, a lot of times we don't realize someone someone put their hands on our throat. And so it's become a mentality of lack. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. When in all actuality, there's more than we can even imagine can go around for everybody. So for me, I've got to realize that there's an abundance when it comes to money. And because there's an abundance when it comes to money, I've got to take my own hand off of my throat so that and give myself, give myself the grace to receive as much as possible. If I don't, I'll continue to live in that lack. There's a scripture that says this. Psalms 23, the first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The translation of that just says, I shall not lack for anything. God is my shepherd, there is no lack. And for those of us that are faith driven, we've got to take our hands off of our own throat and allow God's abundance, allow what he's already given us, which is in an abundance of everything, to take that abundance, make over the mindset, renew our minds, so that one, if money is something that you would like to use as a tool, we can use it. So my personal money mindset makeover is realizing that there's no lack. There's only abundance. How do I how do I know that? The air. The air teaches me that there's more than enough for everyone. So Day, that's today's uh, quick um, podcast, my personal money mindset makeover in the making. And I'll continue to talk about this over the coming months, sharing updates and news about how things have changed because of this makeover. Guys, I want to thank you for joining me for this episode of the Account for Life podcast. I'm Jay Moore, the Healthy Accountant, helping you to account for your life. God bless, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace. This has been the Account for Your Life podcast with your host, the healthy accountant himself, Jay Moore. Until next time, make it a great day.